Hi everyone, I'm Jarko from Informal Systems and we'll present you today the work we did on a formal specification and model checking of Tendermint blockchain synchronization protocol. Informal is a research and de development organization which focused on design, implementation and formal verification of distributed systems and protocols. We envision a cooperatively owned distributed organizations running on top of verifiable and reliable software. We are main contributor of the Tendermint blockchain system, inter-blockchain communication protocol, and we also maintain Apalachi model checker. The work we'll present today is a joint collaboration of researcher and engineers in informal. Tendermint is a Byzantine folklore and state machine replication engine. At the core of Tendermint, we have a consen BFT consensus protocol, which is a variant of a DLS protocol for efficient gossip layer. It is a core component of the Cosmos project, which is a network of independent blockchains running on top of Tendermint-like consensus engines interconnected with inter-blockchain communication protocol. It is used in production by several proof of stake blockchain systems for more than a year, securing more than a billion of dollar in a cumulative value. One of the primary deployment of Tendermint is Cosmos Hub, which runs on wide area network by 125 validators, and we have more than hundreds of other nodes in the gossip network. Main implementation of Tendermint at the moment is in Go language, and it consists of several sub-protocols or modules. At the core, we have consensus module, which is responsible for ordering of blocks and dissemination, therefore, of proposals and votes. Then we have the mempool component, which is responsible for dissemination of transactions, which eventually end up in blocks. Tendermint is a proof of stake so proof of stake system where the misbehavior of nodes is punishable by removing stake. And this is how we incentivize correct behavior of nodes. The core component for, for, the, the, for this is called evidence module. And evidence module is responsible for dissemination of misbehavior, which is typically a set of signed messages. And finally, we have the FASing protocol, which is a, at the core of, of this talk. And FASing protocol is responsible for supporting nodes which lag behind to catch up by cooperatively fetching committed blocks from its peers. We are in the process of formally specifying and verifying all those protocols. And the first one we started with, it's a fast sync, and this is what we'll present today. Hello, my name is Josef Witter. Uh, I'm talking over from Sharko now. So as I said, our goal is to implement and to verify all these protocols in the Tendermint system. And uh, at the same time, we would like to develop a, a development and verification method uh, that uh, allows us that verification and development goes hand in hand. So whether we call it verification-driven development or development-driven vacation, verification, or some even more uh, deeper nesting, we are still struggling with ourselves. But the point for us is that we really believe that verification development uh, have to go hand in hand. We don't believe that uh, you can just implement a protocol and then throw it, uh, and then just give it to the verification engineers and they should be able to verify it. I don't think this is going to work. On the other hand, we also don't believe that we, have, that we can have a very nice waterfall method where we start with abstract specifications and refine and refine until we end up with a specification because the, the, the environment in which we are in, the requirements are still changing. We have to adapt uh, quite quickly. So this hand in hand is for us very important. So, and as a result, uh, we have very active discussions uh, between verification engineers and software engineers and for us, English specifications serve as a basis to document the design choices in these discussions. So 
another rationale for so we came up with this uh, structure for English specifications and uh, we looked at existing English specifications and we understood that they are often written by software engineers for software engineers so they focus on data structures and then APIs but what they often don't talk about is what is the system doing when run on multiple processes in a distributed system what uh, are the fault tolerant aspects? What are the timing assumptions? So all these these uh, these uh, informations are very important for for example for researchers who want to understand for what environment the protocols are uh, designed in order to be able to to adapt them, but also for potential adopters or for other projects to look for solutions to the problems to understand precisely what is the problem we are addressing and with what means. On the other hand, we also need of course, temporal logic specifications if you want to do uh, verification eventually. So, so this has to be in there. So all this, this information is result of discussion between verification engineers and software engineers and protocol designers and we record them in this structured form of uh, VDD English specifications. So here uh, in the structure, we start with tendermint blockchain terms because all the protocols in some form uh, refer to that. And then in a, sort of TLA refinement style, we start from a sequential problem statement and then go to what distributed aspects and at the end uh, end up with the protocol uh, specification itself. So in part two, the idea is basically that everyone, the general audience should understand uh, what's going on, what the pro protocol is doing. Uh, in part three, we talk about all the aspects about distribution, for example, timing, uh, fault assumptions, things like this, but also about the problem statement in a precise manner in temporal logic. So we have a formal understanding of what is the environment this protocol is designed for and what are the expected uh, temporal logic properties supposed to solve. And finally, in part four, we explain how it is solved. So this defines the protocol. And here, for example, all this is done in the public. Here you have the screenshot of the result of this work for this protocol we discussed in this talk for FastSync. Um, and what this FastSync is doing, it's a, it's a solution to the blockchain synchronization problem and the question just is how do I catch up to the latest state if I was disconnected for some time. So in Tendermint, Tendermint you need a root of trust. So typically you have uh, the, the initial block and then you ask someone for newer blocks that you that in order to download but of course you cannot trust any information because we are working in a fault prone environment so you have to check the blocks that you're getting so this blockchain synchronization protocols addresses two problems one how can i check that the block is from the chain this is typically called uh, block verification and problem two is uh, which blocks do I download from where? So this talks about lo load balancing and figuring out whether other nodes are faulty that don't request uh, blocks from them anymore. So in this talk, due to limited time, we focus on the on the block verification uh, in this talk. So I give you here some intuition, and Igor gives you some uh, more formal understanding in, in TLA uh, in a minute. So. Block verification in uh, Tendermint, as I said, is subjective. So let's assume here that I have block one downloaded already and I trust it that it's from the blockchain and I've also downloaded some block two and some block three. And the question I want to ask is whether block two actually is from the blockchain. So the important thing is that uh, the Tendermint is consensus based, which means that there are certain validators that are deciding on the new blocks. So in block one here, for example, it's stored who are the next validators. So process one to four, these are, these are going to be, be the validators that decide on block two. So they are also stored here in the validators. And by the way that the consensus works, we need that two thirds of them sign a block. So the commit for the block, it always refers to the last block here, needs to be signed by two thirds of the of these validators. In this case, we have here process two, three, and four, which is more than two thirds. Everything is fine. And of course, we need that they sign that block so that uh, they sign the hash to this block too. So we have to check this kind of consistency constraints that here the next validator said it was the validator set of two and that we have enough signatures and that the hash is matching. 
and now Igor is talking to you about the formalization of this. Welcome to the third part of this talk and here we are going to talk about our specification efforts with TLA and mole checking results. So the first thing that we tried about fast sync um, in terms of formal specifications, we specified fast sync in TLA that was done by Jarko. He sat down and by knowing how the implementation works and how the English specification looks like, he wrote uh, a TLA specification that focused on communication between the peers and the node that is doing the synchronization. It's actually not a huge specification. It takes 700 lines of code in TLA+, plus, but TLA is a very condensed language, so uh, there is a lot of happening in these 700 lines. In this specification, we did not pay attention to too many details uh, of the blockchain and blockchain verification. So instead of having this block data structure that Joseph explained to you earlier, we had much simpler blocks. For instance, the block hashes were just heights, and we had uh, abstract predicates here that were telling us whether a block is well formed, which means it passes a block verification, or whether a commit contained uh, enough votes from, from the validators. So Jarko wrote this spec, and this was already a good tool for exchange uh, between system engineers and verification engineers. We could discuss uh, the protocol based on some formal description. TLA forces us to do things more formally, right? And as many people notice uh, when they start using TLA is that already the process of writing down the specification, even in English, it uncovered some issues in the protocol. But we didn't go uh, much further there. We wrote some safety and blindness properties that we believe the protocol should satisfy, and we left verification for the future. So of course, Jacques wrote, uh, ran uh, TLC on this protocol, and he debugged the protocol a bit by removing some obvious mistakes in the formalization. But at some point, he was just saying, I'm tired of waiting for TLC to finish, so I don't know what to do. Then we decided to take the next step. So we decided to actually involve uh, model checking in this process. We wrote uh, a bit more properties, uh, more safety and lines properties. We believe the protocol should satisfy. We ran CLC in a AWS instance because uh, it takes hours and sometimes days to get something interesting from CLC. And we also ran our new model checker, which is called Apalachia. That's a symbolic model checker for TLA Plus that reduces the model checking questions, bound model checking questions to Microsoft Z3. So in short, what we found actually that all the intuitive properties that we specified in TLA, all of them were violated. And if you think about uh, different reasons uh, for why these properties could be violated, all of these reasons were here. First of all, our safety and blindness properties were a bit too optimistic. We had to make them more precise. For instance, uh, by saying that sometimes the protocol can finish by timeout, and if it finishes by timeout, then the synchronized blocks are correct, uh, but we couldn't synchronize, for instance, all the blocks. We could only synchronize a portion of, of the blocks from the blockchain. The second thing is that actually, when we retrieved this protocol from the implementation, we missed some block verification steps. We believe uh, some of them are not essential for the protocol and uh, in the implementation for, for the other uh, features. But they were essential. When we went down to the level of the protocol and talked to the uh, system engineers actually told us that these steps are there and that's why the protocol is actually not broken, although we believe that it was broken at some point. And the third issue is that actually our model, a blockchain model was a bit too abstract. It was producing us false positives. But no worries, we fixed all of this and now we are much more convinced uh, that this protocol is actually working. I'm just giving you a bit of intuition why and how we fixed 
things. First of all, we, we actually introduced uh, explicitly a reference blockchain in our model. And we introduced uh, more structure in, in the blocks um, following the, the structure that we have seen in the English stack. Introduced back the validator sets, but these are not like exact uh, sets of IDs or public keys. They're more like abstract sets that you would probably see when you check uh, how people verify Paxos or similar protocols. And we also introduced the set of committers or voters, which is also a validator set. And finally, we uh, introduced these uh, abstract predicates that tell us how uh, equality of a hash reflects the fact that a block uh, is coming from the reference chain, that it's actually on the blockchain. And this is the most interesting thing in this specification. Actually, when we specify the behavior of a faulty process, the faulty processes can do whatever they like. There are some restrictions here, and we have to write down them explicitly in the TLA specification. For instance, here we say if we got a block and its hash equals to the hash of, of the block on the reference chain, then indeed this block should be exactly as a block on the reference chain. And the other way around, if you have enough uh, votes in a commit, and these are votes by the validators uh, from the previous block, then indeed the hashes should match. So these two essential properties, they actually tell us that uh, the presenting processes can do a lot, but they cannot forge signatures, for instance. And here in the TLA specification, you see, see these things explicitly. What we did about this uh, specification, we checked the properties by Pyron and TLC and Apalachi. Interestingly, when you run TLC just for, say, four blocks, it's not a huge blockchain, but still an interesting one. And when you only have one correct peer, TLC finishes very quickly. It can check all the interesting properties in less than a minute. And it does exhaustive state exploration, so we are sure that these properties hold. But when we add just one more peer who is faulty, who can be Byzantine, then TLC uh, has a very hard time. It actually times out after one day on all of these properties, but nevertheless, running TLC is still useful because it tells us that there are no bugs up to some depths, for instance, depths for T. When we run Apalachi on exactly the same specification, it finishes much faster and say in this case, it explores computations for a longer depth. So it gives us feedback faster and it actually explores longer executions. Fortunately, Apalachi doesn't uh, implement liveness. Uh, we can only check termination by running CLC. Of course, these results uh, are incomplete here because uh, we only explore bounded executions and in the future, we would like to uh, write down an inductive invariant and check it on. And maybe in the far future, uh, we would like to check uh, this protocol for an unbounded number of peers and blocks, but for that we would need other tools, maybe I. So the lessons we have learned from this activity are very interesting. First of all, by running model checkers, we actually have found the actual protocol properties, not the properties we believed intuitively were correct. And another lesson that we should actually run uh, verification as soon as possible. We should run model checkers as soon as possible. We should write as many invariants as possible. That was another lesson. And finally, what I want to say that uh, sometimes people say that TLA is a good communication tool. That's true. But when you run the model checkers, you actually open a completely new dimension of uh, bugs you even didn't expect you see in your protocol. So if you have uh, TLA specifications or you write some, I urge you to go and try the model checkers like TLC and Apalachia. Thanks for listening. We'll be happy to answer your questions.